Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with uh, Captain Ron. Making this video here to just share some thoughts I had about when I graded your physics, your 109 uh, midterms here. So some things I want to make sure we get cleaned up before you folks take your final exam. Okay, so I'm not going to cover this one here. Um, these are just definitions and hopefully we know uh, what uh, all of these are. So I'm going to go through a few of these though. So so number two here, let's see, how many seconds will it take to accelerate a 1,500 kilogram car um, to a certain speed there? Now, this is a unit of power, okay? And power is change in energy over change in time. So I'm gonna write that equation-wise right here. It's also equal to work over time. Actually, both are the same because your work, the work done on a system and your change in energy are the same thing. So here what's happening is this car is changing in its kinetic energy because it starts from rest and then it's moving at 15 meter per second. So its initial kinetic energy is zero because it's not moving. Its final kinetic energy is one half mv squared, right? m v squared you can calculate a number and then you're going to rewrite this equation your power which is 50,000 watts is equal to your change in energy I'm just going to put the number here that you get from this divided by time and then you would solve that for t okay number three an arrow fired straight up into the air with an initial speed of 75 meter per second. How high will the arrow go? So the intent when I wrote this was work energy. Okay, If I had to pick one big concept for everybody to become experts on, that would be it. All right? Energy methods are uh, uh, probably the most important part of the course. So when you're using work energy, you always start with a picture of the system here at what I'm going to call state one. The arrow is, this is just after it's been fired. So in this picture, it's moving at 75 meter per second. And then eventually the arrow gets up to its highest point here. At the highest point, the velocity is approximately zero, and I would call that state two. So when you're using principles of work and energy, you should always draw pictures of the uh, system at the two states. Then you write out the work energy theorem. Now, The PE1, potential energy here, right? if this is our datum, our PE1 would be zero. Our KE1 would be 1 half mv squared. And it's important to realize that v is the velocity here in picture one, that's that one. The work term is zero, I'll explain, I'll explain why here in a minute. The PE2 term right, is an mgh term. And the KE2, all right, at position two, the arrow's hardly moving. So that's gonna be a 1 half, well, whoops, we're just going to call that kinetic energy basically zero. Now the reason the work term is zero is because as the arrow is moving through the air, all right, here's a picture of the arrow just at an instant in time somewhere between here and here. If you ignore air drag, the only force acting on the arrow is the gravitational force. And that's what the potential energy takes into account for you. And so there's no other forces. Most of the problems that you folks get, or probably all of them, um, that are of this type, the work term will be zero. Okay, I will give you some sort of clue right in the problem if it's not. But then you would solve this for the H. In fact, you'll notice the mass divides out. And you get this. Now, a lot of you, when you did your midterm, did something like the distance is v squared over 2g or something like this. I will not accept this uh, on your final exam, okay? I want you to apply energy methods, which starts with the picture, this equation, and then the details. Okay, so make sure that when you study for your final, when you're doing any sort of energy problem, make sure you picture, write out the work energy theorem, and then go from there. Okay, number four, elevators lift to 10 meters by an electric motor. So again, you know, let's start with a picture. Here's the elevator at maybe position one. And then later on, we're at position two. 
and it's 10 meters higher. Okay, so part A, find the change in potential energy of the elevator. So remember, potential energy you can measure from wherever you want. If we measure potential energy from here, then that potential energy would be zero. Then at position two, your potential energy, all right, mgh, m, g is the 9.8 meter per second squared, and h. Now, I know it might drive you nuts. I'm not going through and actually giving you numerical values. All right, I'm trying to, to demonstrate what's important. Okay, the actual number really is the last thing I look at in the problem. So when I'm grading this one, this is the stuff I'm looking for right here. And then when it says the change in potential energy, that's actually going to be whatever this number is because this, it started at zero. Okay, the power. So power is change in energy over change in time. So when you get that value, you put that number here. The time, put that number there, and you're going to get a number in joules per second, right, which is a watt. And then part C is a unit conversion. All right, so number five, this is about a problem about gravitational acceleration. And when you drop an object, whether it's a rock or anything else, it will accelerate down. Oh, actually, let me go back and restate that. When you drop an object like a rock that's fairly heavy compared to its surface area, that object will accelerate down at approximately 9.8 meter per second per second. And if we were to do a velocity graph, for this right velocity against time when you first drop the rock it's not moving so at t equals zero the velocity is zero now it says five seconds later so one two three four five and we don't know the speed or the v but it, it has to be some number we'll just put it on the graph we'll call it v and then we will, the simplest way to connect these is with a line. And remember, acceleration is the slope of a velocity graph. So that's going to be a change in V over a change in T. And the acceleration is the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meter per second per second. And the delta T was given, 5 seconds. You can just solve this for the change in V, and you're going to get roughly a little less than 50 meter per second. Now, this doesn't look like it asked for the how far, but if it did, you would get that from this area right here. The how far, the distance that rock fell, would be one half. And what I'll do is I'll color code this. One half this distance, I'll put, uh, that's your time, five seconds. And then times this distance, which is whatever number you calculate, right? That thing is going to be approximately 49 meter per second. Again, approximately, and you're getting that from here. And that will tell you how far that rock fell. Okay, six. Estimate how many minutes it'll take to drive 250 miles, assuming 70 miles per hour. All right, so that's 70 mile per hour. That's your speed, which is distance over time. So 25 miles is your distance, and then solve that for t. And you're going to get a number. It's going to be a decimal, and that's going to be in miles. I'm sorry, that's going to be in hours. And then it's just a unit conversion to calculate, to move it over to minutes. Okay, so seven, I'm not going to bother. Uh, well, I guess I will go over these. So work is a Newton meter or joule because those are the same thing. Potential energy is a Newton meter or joule. Uh, is there one up above that? Nope. Velocity is measured in meter per second. Acceleration in meter per second per second or meter per second squared. Force is measured in newtons. All 
All right, so eight is about your ability to interpret these position graphs. So this is, again, a position graph. You can tell because of the x or the meter. And this thing's starting out at x equals some negative number. One, two, three, four, five, six, about negative seven. And one, two, three, three seconds later, it's at x equals plus four. So this object apparently is moving to the right if we're doing like a right positive. Okay, and let's see, these are velocity questions. So velocity, remember, is change in x over change in t. And it's important to realize what this is. This is slope. This is the slope of, the, of these graphs. So at two seconds on the graph, we're about here. Now, it looks like the value there is about zero for x, but that's not what the velocity is. That thing's moving. Uh, so this is a slope calculation. And because it's linear, you can pick any two points on that line that you want. I would use this one and this one and cal to calculate the slope of the uh, uh, line between, between those two points. And you know, slope is rise over run. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's up eleven. I'll do this in green and then over. Whoops, I meant to do that in green. and then over three. Okay. Repeat for the other times. So, you know, at four seconds on the graph, we are, let's see, one, two, three, four. We are here, and ask yourself, what is the slope here? You'll notice that the x is not changing. If the time frame were, say, here, that would be here on the graph, and you'd be looking for the slope of this line, some positive number. If the time were here, you'd be looking for the slope of this line, some negative number. All right, so this one is a velocity graph. And some important things about this graph, right, that I'm sure is going to come up. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. This is a slope, slope of a velocity graph. So any questions about acceleration is asking for slopes. And then any questions asking for distances or, or changes in x, we're going to get from area. So let's see, when is the particle at rest? So it's going to be at rest anytime the velocity is 0. Right? So that's here and here. What is the acceleration at two seconds? So at two seconds, that's here on the graph. And again, the acceleration is the slope of this line. Pick any two points on that line and um, calculate the slope. And again, slope is rise over run. So, you know, just to give you an idea, if we wanted to use, say, like this point and this point, the rise, that's up five. The run is over about five, one, six, seven, eight about 9. So up 5 over 9, there's your slope. When is the acceleration 0? So you're looking for when is the slope 0. And as you look at this, there's no point here where the slope is 0, so none. How far does it go from 0 to 9 seconds? So 9 seconds is here. The how far is this area right here. Right, and it's 9 seconds from here to here, 5 meter per second from here to here, and that's a triangular area. So this video is at 14 minutes. I think what I'll do is I'll stop this right here and just probably and make another one and pick up at number 10. Okay, have a great day.